Good evening and welcome. Live tonight on the latest from 7 News, decisions surface the nuclear subs Australia wants in its arsenal. School kids rush to hospital with a mystery illness after eating lollies on a bus. A murder investigation underway tonight. A woman found dead in a yard. And spending sprees and lavish trips, the sensational claims against the Hillsong megachurch. The latest from 7 News with Michael Usher. Well, leaked details are swirling tonight on Australia's new fleet of nuclear submarines. Political editor Mark Riley is travelling with the PM in India and Mark Anthony Albanese is shoring up support ahead of this crucial deal going through. Well, Michael, that structure behind me here is called the Gateway of India, an appropriate metaphor for Anthony Albanese's visit here, not just to Mumbai, but to this burgeoning, bustling nation. He's trying to find an entry point into a new relationship with what he's now calling a top-tier strategic partner in India. And at the moment, beyond that archway and on the horizon, he's getting a personal tour of the pride and joy uh, in military terms of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, and that is the INS Vikrant, the first ever aircraft carrier built entirely in India. Very impressive piece of modern warfare uh, machinery. So it shows the closest of the relationship that Mr Albanese has given that personal tour at a time when news is breaking of Australia's own designs in terms of its future submarine program. There are two sorts of stories breaking here. One from the US telling us that Australia is likely to purchase five of the Virginia class nuclear powered submarines. These are huge but very stealthy subs that can stay on the ocean floor almost endlessly. At the same time, the British press is, is uh, also speculating that Australia may be buying a, about three of their own astute class nuclear powered submarines. But what we don't know there is whether they would have American made or British made weaponry and guidance systems. Now that would make eight in total. All the details will be revealed in San Diego on Monday. Mr. Albanese will be heading there where he'll meet AUKUS partners, US President Joe Biden and British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak to make the formal announcement. India is quite happy about Australia's designs of this nuclear powered submarine program because it provides extra security in the Indian Ocean, blue water security. So trying to build that relationship nation to nation, but also person to person. And we saw a great example of that today at the cricket where the Prime Ministers uh, went on to the field at Modi Stadium, a very impressive stadium, 130,000 capacity, 30,000 more than the MCG, a bit of a boasting uh, for the Indian Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Albanese belting out the national anthem with the Australian team, both Prime Ministers meeting the teams and then going on a, a motorcade of one around the interior of the, the massive field. An extraordinary experience for both of them and Anthony Albanese said one of the uh, most striking moments of his life as he now heads to New Delhi from here in Mumbai for a day of official meetings with Prime Minister Narendra Modi and then of course on to the US for that big announcement. Michael? Mike Riley there, thank you, from India. A homicide investigation is underway north of Brisbane tonight after a woman in her 50s was found dead. Her body was found in the yard of a Kalanga home after reports of a fight. Police are speaking with a 36-year-old man believed to be related to the woman. No charges have been laid, but the death is being treated as suspicious. And a woman's fighting for life tonight after being hit by a car in Sydney South. The woman, believed to be in her 30s, was hit in Kingsgrove. She was treated by paramedics for head injuries and taken to hospital. Police have set up a crime scene there. The driver taken for mandatory testing. Fifteen primary school students are recovering tonight, falling ill after reportedly eating lollies. Anna McGraw is in Townsville covering the story. Anna, good evening. A school bus driver under investigation. What do we know? Yeah, well, it was a morning school run turned to medical emergency when 22 children ingested an unknown substance and fell ill when they arrived at school. Now, paramedics and police were called to Bluewater State School, which is about 30 minutes away from Townsville City here in North Queensland. Just after 10 o'clock this morning, they arrived on scene to find 22 children uh, complaining of nausea, stomach pain and headaches. Now, uh, they say they've told their parents that they were given lollies 
families on the school bus in the morning. Now, police say it's an incredibly bizarre set of circumstances, but that bus driver is cooperating with investigators to try and work out exactly where the lollies came from and when they were eaten and exactly who they came from uh, as well. Now, 15 of those 22 children, they were brought here to the Townsville University Hospital today. Now, they are still here this evening, but thankfully all of those 15 children who are aged from 7 to 11, they are in a stable condition, which is excellent yeah. news. It's understood that they will be kept here overnight for observations and hopefully discharged tomorrow morning. We'll bring you all the updates uh, as this story continues to unfold. But police say it's an investigation that they've uh, never seen uh, before here in Townsville. Well, very strange, but at least the kids are OK. All right, Anna McGraw, thank you. Now to political reporter Rob Scott in Canberra for us tonight. Rob, good evening. Accusations of major financial crimes have been levelled against the mega church Hillsong. What are the claims? Well, Michael, fraud, money laundering and tax evasion, both here in Australia and around the world. These are ex the explosive allegations levelled by the independent MP Andrew Wilkie under the protection of parliamentary privilege today. The Tasmanian MP says... Thousands of documents given to him by a whistleblower show how millions of dollars in church donations were allegedly misused. He's accusing uh, the founder, Brian Houston, of using private jets like Ubers, racking up $170,000 in one three-month period. Mr Wilkie says the uh, files also detail how four members of the Houston family spent $150,000 on a luxury getaway to Mexico. And there's a whole laundry list of other expensive purchases allegedly made using church money. Hillsong followers believe that the money they put in the poor, a poor box, goes to the poor. But these documents show how that money is actually used to do the kind of shopping that would embarrass a Kardashian. For example, a $6,500 Cartier watch for Bobby Houston, $2,500 in Louis Vuitton luggage, a $2,500 watch for Phil Dooley, two watches worth $15,000 for Joel and Julia Abel, shopping sprees for designer clothes at Saks Fifth Avenue, and even $16,000 for custom skateboards. Mr Wilkie says the files also show the megachurch earns $80 million more in Australian annual income than it reports publicly. And he says all these documents were offered to the Tax Office and the Australian Securities and Investments Commission last year, but not acted on. And late today, Hillsong responded with what is a pretty lengthy statement saying it has been honest with its congregation about past governance failures and it's a different church now than it was a year ago, saying it's under new leadership. But it says Mr Wilkie's claims are out of context and in many respects wrong. So there's probably a fair bit to go still on this yet, Michael. Many more questions, I'd imagine. All right, Rob Scott there in Canberra. Thank you. Victoria Premier Daniel Andrews is under fire tonight after allegations by the former anti-corruption commissioner. The Labor government's accused of launching revenge attacks on the watchdog, IBAC, while it investigated the party. The Premier's dismissed the scathing criticism, rejecting any suggestion the government didn't act appropriately. Hospitals in Melbourne's eastern suburbs are recovering after a crippling IT meltdown. The code yellow saw healthcare workers unable to access emails, phones or patient medical records. Appointments and surgeries had to be cancelled and ambulances redirected. No evidence of a cyber attack and a review obviously will be conducted. Good news for Sydney commuters impacted by yesterday's train breakdown. A free day of public transport to make up for all those delays. Up to 300,000 people were left stranded when the communication system failed. Uber says their automatic software was responsible for excessive cross-city fares during the chaos and all the riders there will be refunded. Let's go live to Europe correspondent Sarah Greenolch now, who's following breaking news out of Ukraine tonight. Sarah, good evening from here. Russia's launched a major offensive. Michael, good evening. This is actually the biggest wave of uh, Russian attacks on Ukraine in almost a month. So according to Ukraine, 81 missiles were fired overnight in this sustained barrage. Uh, Ukrainian air defence has managed to shoot down about 34 of them, but that still means a lot uh, made it through air defences, including uh, against the capital, Kiev. So residents again forced to hide in shelters this morning at about 7am. Uh, residents in one residential area heard an explosion. A few people rushed to hospital there uh, over in 
the northeast in the city of Kharkiv, which of course is the country's second biggest city. About 15 missiles uh, did make an impact. They have no running water there, no heating today. Uh, in the Lviv region, all the way over in the west of the country, as we know, close to the Polish border, five people have been killed uh, in a strike on a residential area and another person also killed in the Dnipro region uh, with strikes targeting energy infrastructure. So it was a mixture of Russian rockets and kamikaze drones, but a really sustained barrage. Um, but the big headline, though, uh, coming out of this this morning, Michael, is about the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. So this is Europe's largest such facility, and uh, it is now being completely cut off from the power grid. So this has happened before. The last time mm. was in November last year. Uh, the good part about this, if there is one, is that the International Atomic Energy Agency back in September um, recommended that all six reactors be shut down, and that happened to try and minimise the risk of a nuclear uh, catastrophe like Chernobyl or Fukushima. But uh, the reactors still need to be cooled with water pumps. So currently 20 diesel generators have been activated. They're saying there's about 10 days uh, worth of fuel supplies. So Gee. essentially the clock starts now. Um, yeah. Ukraine uh, today is accusing Russia of putting the world on the brink of a nuclear catastrophe. So something to keep an eye on. Indeed, Michael. that is precarious. All right, Sarah Greenwich there in London reporting. Thank you. Georgia's ruling party says, uh, says rather, it will drop a controversial bill that sparked two nights of violent riots on the streets of the nation's capital. Thousands of protesters rallied outside the parliament in Tbilisi, some clashing with police, water cannons and tear gas used to quell the tensions there, as you can see in that vision. Opponents of the so-called foreign agents bill argued the draft law represented a shift to the authoritarian right and stifled efforts to join the European Union. Well, here, pain for borrowers tonight. All of the big four banks passing on that interest rate hike in full. Let's go to Liam Tapper, live in the newsroom. Liam, hello to you. Not all bad news for customers, though. Yeah, good evening, Michael. Well, you're right. It really is mixed for many Australians tonight. For those with a mortgage, it's not great news. But for those people who have savings in the bank, it is a little better. Let's, though, let's start with those people who are paying off their home loans, with all four banks passing on that 0.25 of a percentage point, as you said. For a variable loan, this will be a challenging time, no doubt, but this rate rise will come into effect from March 17 for NAB, Commonwealth and ANZ customers, while those who bank with Westpac, they'll see it from March 21. Now, for some good news. Traditionally, the big four banks, they've been quite selective with, with which savings accounts they hike, but they have recently pulled up their socks. Uh, the best savings products on the market though and where you will see a five in front of it they will lie elsewhere away from the big four this is the bank of queensland's future saver account that's offering a 5.15 percent rate and that's on a fifty thousand dollar balance followed by virgin money boost saver with a return rate of 4.85 percent and there are a number of smaller providers that are offering a range of options as well for those people who are fortunate enough to have squirreled squirreled away Way rather some cash. So, Michael, while the economic outlook isn't great for many, for some, mm. there is a little light in, in, during this uncertainty. Yeah, and that light is needed. All right, Liam Tapper there. Thank you. Despite shoppers starting to pull back, department stores seem to be making a stunning comeback. Network finance editor Gemma Acton joins me now. Gem, good evening. Uh, Maya certainly climbing out of its doldrums. Yes, yeah, so it looks like it, doesn't it? Uh, less than five years ago, they posted a near half a billion dollar loss. So to come out today with record sales, uh, net profits more than doubling, it is a terrific result. Part of it is good luck. So. COVID coming to an end, people coming to back into city centres again, where obviously their main stores are. But part of it's management being very aggressive on things that just weren't working. So you might remember Maya stores of old had lots of year-long discounting where you could go in at any time and see lots of discount racks. It looked really ugly. It hurt their margins. They got rid of all of that. They made a real effort to bring in newer, fresher brands to help bring in a new, younger audience as well, which has mm. really helped. Uh, and importantly, they've really driven their loyalty program. Australians love loyalty programs. They're really, also really useful for retailers to collect data and figure out what their customers want. They now have more than 7 million people as part of Maya One. Right. That's more than a third up on what it was a year ago. And many of them are actively engaged, are really keep 
coming back month after month. So uh, they've done some really good moves there. Another obvious one is how improving their online store. So yeah. it used to be a really shabby offering and they've really fixed that up. David Jones as well, bit of a turnaround? Yeah, so David Jones released its results last week and it was a similar story. Sales up, profits up, not just in the back half of last year, but also at the start of this year, which really distinguishes the department stores from any other retailers that had a quite a tough start to this year. They're lucky insofar as they've got iconic brands. David Jones has been around since 1838. Maya has been around since 1900. Many Australians have very fond memories of Christmas lights or going to buy a special outfit or a day mm. trip to the city. They're also omni-channel, which is really helping. So if you search for something online, they'll come up. If you search for something uh, in the city, you'll, you'll bump into them. They're plastered all over various sorts of media, so they have a very high profile and presence. Yeah. And the same trend that's helping Mai with people moving back into the city is clearly helping David Jones as well. Does it last, though? Or is this <laughs> just a, a big push post-COVID? It, it's interesting. If you look across the border, all the retailers who've reported in recent weeks, it's a really mixed bag. Coles talked about customers trading down. Woolworths talked calls at trading in where they're now buying more stuff to have at home instead of going out and then your JB Hi-Fi's, your Harvey Normans, your good guys, Nick Scarly, a few others have talked about sales really drying up early this year. Finally the impact of interest rates really starting to be noticed. There wasn't much mention of that from either mm. David Jones or Mai. They acknowledged that the growth would probably slow down but they're expecting more growth to come and one really bullish sign from Mai is the fact that they gave such a generous payout to their shareholders today. They doubled their regular interim dividend and they gave an additional special right. dividend on top of that. So yeah. you wouldn't do that if you're worried about where cash flow is going to come from. Okay, quite a turnaround, yes. both fronts. All right, Gemma, thank you. Thank you. Well, still to come, our panel is here to discuss the week's big talking points, including an Australian judge slammed for kicking a breastfeeding mother out of his courtroom. Plus, revolutionary weight loss drugs, should they become subsidised by the government? That's next here on the latest from 7 News. Australia is set to buy as many as five nuclear-powered submarines from the United States as details of the AUKUS deal are leaked before next week's official announcement in San Diego. According to multiple reports tonight, a later stage of the plan would involve us acquiring a modified fleet of the UK's Astute-class submarine. Those vessels would be assembled in Adelaide and likely incorporate American technology. Let's bring in our panellists now, author and journalist Carolyn Ovington, marketing expert and labour strategist Dee Madigan. Good to have you both with us tonight. Uh, Carolyn, let's start with you first. So US shipyards already saying they just can't keep up with China's capacity. Um, are we making a mistake on relying on Washington here? Well, it's only one of the infuriating things about this news today. The first infuriating thing is the way that it's been leaked. So if you're an Australian and your government is going to spend, what, 30 or $40 billion yeah. on nuclear-powered submarines, which is of itself quite controversial, to sort of find out a little bit from the Wall Street Journal, a little bit from the Guardian, a little bit because of somebody's talking to the Prime Minister in Britain. We don't know enough of the detail to know what it is that we're going to be getting. Some reports say that we'll have to take some submarines from the US that already exist, in which case they'll have to crew them, which is a kind of interesting development to have US sailors, submarine sailors, mm. crewing our submarines. Others are saying, no, well, we'll have to wait until 2030, by which time the technology will be probably obsolete. We'll also need to have about 800 people with skills that currently don't exist. Yeah. The whole thing's infuriating. Dee, what do you think it actually says? I mean, I, I think submarines are sort of people are glazed over on the whole subject of submarines. But what does it say actually about the AUKUS deal? We seem to be trying to keep America and the UK happy in this deal that we've entered. Well, I think it's a good idea. So it, it, it sounds like it's actually going to be a British design with American technology. This is the biggest investment Australia has ever made in our defence. It is the biggest project ever. It is going to create thousands of jobs in Australia as well as in America and in England and will be one of only seven countries in the world with this technology. So what it does do is it means our manufacturing industry gets sort of a shot in the arm in terms of of boosting its capability. So yes, we will re rely on American and English um, expertise at the beginning while our people are trained up, but it's a real opportunity for Australia, mm. you know, to move ahead. Who benefits from that? I mean, I think there's some talk of them being built in Adelaide. The, the, in Adelaide, it was supposed to be, most of them are going to be built, and I think there's going to be somewhere in Perth as well. But then, of course, there's the thing about America saying, well, we might want to um, 
have some places along the east coast where yes. we stop off. And, and, and all of this, of course, is partly to keep China in check. There's no doubt that this is... And I, I think it also explains it. why the Prime Minister is yeah. today in India, because you can't be investing in that level of nuclear-powered sub submarines without telling India, because one of the flashpoints for any possible disputes yes. in the future are India and China. And in those disputes, we will have to side with India. So we really do need to let them know. And it must have been a little galling to many people who didn't know to be reading these little bits and pieces that everywhere. are leaking yeah. all over the world. Let's have a look at this subject now. Child experts have slammed a Melbourne judge who kicked a breastfeeding mother out of his courtroom. He told the woman she'd, quote, be a distraction. Uh, Carolyn, what year is the judge living in? It's absolutely outrageous, isn't it? Mm. Absolutely outrageous. It's something as beautiful and as natural as feeding your child could be described as something that might cause offence or a distraction, which is the same thing. I was absolutely appalled. Dee, this was at the county court. Did the judge get it wrong? Oh, yeah. Remember, um, was it Kirsty Marshall got thrown out of Australian Parliament? I don't know what year that was for breastfeeding and things yeah. changed then. But remember when Jacinda Ardern took her baby to United Nations and a journalist asked her, Is, was it going to be a distraction? She said, well, she, she's fully breastfed, so it's kind of a necessity. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, it's just ridiculous that, um, that this happens in this day and age. It's like, it's just we're all old enough to remember when women were castigated for turning up on television pregnant. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? That if you, if you were carrying a baby and you were even, if you were reading the weather or turning the letters on a game show or something, it was considered offensive to show the fact that you were carrying the next generation of human beings into the world. It something as glorious as that. It had sex. Do you think yeah. that's what it yeah, was? Yeah, I reckon yeah, that's, that's what it yeah. came out of, yeah. like some 1950s yeah. thinking like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. And maybe the breastfeeding thing is part of that, that it's... That, that's absolutely bizarre. Yeah. But, but it is weird, like, because I guess for, for blokes in particular, boobs are this incredibly sexual thing, and then all of a sudden they're a biological necessity for feeding a child, and maybe they just struggle to get their head around that, that when we're feeding a baby, there's nothing sexy about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, ab it's an absolutely beautiful and very necessary thing, and women should be encouraged to do it because we know that it is the best thing for the baby. And yeah, the best but not the shamed for not but being not able to do it either. But not shamed for not doing yeah. it as well. Like, exactly yeah. right. So you have to find that balance between encouraging women to breastfeed if they want to and if they can, mm -hmm. and also encouraging women with the bottle as well. Yeah. Couldn't come at a worse time too with you know celebrating International Women's Day yeah. yesterday as well, and here we have that happening. Yeah. I know, well. and uh, there was already a bit of a backlash against International Women's Day, wasn't there? Quite a lot of the youngsters, particularly on social media, were saying, you know, you can have your pink cupcake. <laughs> we, we're so tired of the corporatisation of it. What yes. we want is some. Uh, we want you know equal pay and and maternity leave and all these other things. So have your cupcake. We, I was really interested by how the the backlash against. We did, that we, shifted this year, we I think. We said that. We said, like, with our agency thing, it's like, um, we don't do cupcakes. We have an agency that's majority female, and that's how you do it. Like, and you know who has to buy the cupcakes, right? Yeah, women. Who order the cupcakes yeah. and yeah. put yeah. the cupcakes out? You know who's so doing all that? So it just reinforces that. absolutely everything that shouldn't be yeah. marked on that day. <laughs> Finally, a popular weight loss drug has been approved for use in the National Health Service in the UK. The appetite suppressant Wegovy is said to be popular among celebrities. Elon Musk said the jab helped him get fit. The British government is considering offering the treatment to millions of people in a bid to contain uh, obesity. Uh, Dee, let me ask you this. I mean, um, we're used to quick fixes, but should it be publicly subsidised? Well, I, you know, the fact that Elon Musk said it was a good idea means it may not be. But I just, yeah. I feel like, yes, it probably should because obesity costs us a lot of money in terms of the public purse. But gee, we live in a weird world when there's people starving to death. Yeah. And we're having to subsidise drugs to stop people from eating too much. Like, it, it's, it's, it feels just so, so out of whack. And we're also in this bit where it's all about um, body positivity. Mm. So you don't want to say, you know, there's nothing, you don't want to say there's anything wrong with being overweight. But there actually, you know, there is a point where it's, a health it's actually, crisis. Where it actually it's a health is a health thing. So, yeah. so, so everyone's sort of tiptoeing around these areas because otherwise you get a whole lot of people on Twitter going, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Callum, no, what do you think? No, it should, should it there's be... nobody on earth who doesn't want this drug. Everybody wants this drug and everybody wants this drug to be subsidised because anybody who has tried to lose even five kilos, forget about obesity, that's not what this is about. All the celebrities who are taking this yeah. drug look fantastic and they've all had their skin, the, the fat sucked out of their cheeks as well so their faces look all lovely. They've had their lips done, they've they had their all, eyelids. They, they all look, all look they, lovely. They look they amazing. <laughs> if you ask the average person in the street, would you like a cheap, safe weight loss drug that meant that you could lose that extra five kilos really easily, they would say yes. I know, but don't you would. feel like saying, 
Or, or we could put that money towards starving people in Africa and you could eat less and <laughs> no, next no, I don't know. No I just, it just feels wrong. No, the number but one yeah. thing people want is to... In the, particularly mm. in Australia where we live, mm. the number one thing people want in terms of their body is to lose a bit of weight. Mm. And they'd like to be able to do it easily and they don't want to miss out on all the things. Like, they would like to still be able to have a piece of cake. And they and literally also, want to be able to have their cake and yeah, eat it too. <laughs> and it's frustrating for women in particular yeah. because, you know, men, they say, you know what, they look in the mirror and they say, oh, you know what, I think I want to lose five kilos. And then you look at them five minutes later and they've lost five kilos. Women, they have to sweat and starve and put chains on the fridge and, you know, it's just a night and then they don't lose any Yeah, well, I'll speak for the men and it's not that easy. <laughs> maybe it's an age thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, as you get older yeah. as well, it gets harder. I think that if, if there is a drug out there that can help you lose weight in a safe way, it should be available to everyone yeah. in a cost-effective way. And everyone will get onto it as well. So, All right, Carolyn D, thank you so much for being here. Well, still to come, I'll have your weather forecast. Plus, it's not the most exciting sunset snap, but the lengths people went to capture it are simply out of this world. That's next here on the latest from 7 News. Here's a look at Brisbane tonight. Some light rain, about 28 with rain tomorrow also. For the rest of the capital, Sydney will be partly cloudy, sunny and a top of 26 in Canberra. Melbourne will get a top of 24, partly cloudy for Hobart, Adelaide and Perth and a hot one for Darwin, 32. To our region, storms and a top of 31 for Rockhampton, a few showers for Esperance and a sunny day in Orange. For tonight's final frame, we're travelling out of this world. Now, this may not look like the most beautiful sunset pic you've ever seen, but... It's mind-blowing just how much science went into taking it. NASA's Curiosity rover sent back the remarkable shot from Mars, the first time sun rays have been seen so clearly viewed on the red planet. It's one of the many incredible images the rover's beamed to us here on Earth, including this feather-shaped cloud that appeared after sunset. It's a dazzling postcard from right across the universe, and it is tonight's final frame. Well, thank you for your company this Thursday from the team here. That is the latest. I'm Michael Usher. Have a good night.